What's cracking YouTube, Jobber here? We are here with Noah. Let's hear everyone. <laughs> uh, so you uh, made it all the way to top eight playing yep. your uh, Sky Striker True Draco deck. Yep, it's my okay. first ever premiere event top. Oh, well, congratulations. Yep. That's awesome. Oh, what did you think about your rounds? Uh, Swiss went by pretty easy. I played against eight different decks in Swiss, actually. Um, and then top cut, top 32 was a really big grind. It got down close to time. Yeah. I was able to pull it out. Top 16 was relatively easy. I played against Sky Striker. And then lost in top eight to the champion of YCS Guadalajara, Ramiro. So, what was your record? Uh, in Swiss, I finished nine two, and then yeah, won two rounds in top cut, lost in top eight. Cool. All right, you want to get to the deck profile first? Or you want to do shout outs first? Uh, we'll do the deck profile, deck profile? first. All right. Yeah. All right. So starting off with the monsters, uh, I played one blue boy. So this is the primary normal summon of the deck. It searches for secrets or knowledge, uh, and it kind of gets the engine rolling. It's a really good starter. Um, and then I played only two copies of Ray, because Whoa. in this deck you're usually uh, devoting your normal summon to the blue boy or the Draco monsters, uh, and you're primarily accessing Ray using the area zero targeting uh, Draco spell, and then the Draco spell pops the area zero, you summon Ray from deck. So you don't really want to draw it, but you want to have, uh, have one exist in your deck at all times. And then uh, I played two copies of Ignis and one Dynamite, so a lot of, in the, in the past, I've been playing uh, three Ignis and one Dynamite, but I decided to cut two for this event because I added in another Shark Cannon. Uh, you just don't want to see hands with too many monsters that get cloggy. You just want to see more, uh, more spell cards. And these are primarily used for tribute summoning on your opponent's turn as like a disruption or going second to help break boards. So, because he's a fire for Hitta, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then the only like hand trap in the main deck is three Nibiru's. So I chose to play this, even though most Lunalite players go for the, um, the Nyarla Azathoth combo, because it's the best versus Salad in any random rogue decks. And if I'm going to draw any one hand trap to hopefully let me survive, I'd want it to be this one, either going first or second. So there's actually some cool plays. If you have a Ray on board and this in hand, you can activate Ray's effect as chain link one, provided it's in your opponent's main phase. Uh, and then you can activate Nibiru as chain link two. So then Nibiru resolves tributing everything, and then Ray resolves summoning a link monster. So it's kind of a way to make sure you still have board presence for next turn. So yes, yeah, so that's it for the monsters. I think nine monsters. And then spells. These are pretty self-explanatory. Three engage. Three widows. This is basically like the monarch storm forth. You can just take their monsters and tribute over them. It's pretty cool. And then I play three area zero because um, since I only play two ray, I wanted to have more ways to access her from the deck. And it's just more spells in the deck. Um, and if it makes that rotation like really, really live, just having this card exist in your deck. Uh, so, then I play two shark cannons. That's it. This is it for the three of us. Two shark cannons. Uh, like I said, I cut one Ignis for the second shark. Um, I still sided it out kind of a lot, but it was nice for game one. And then one multi roll, one drones. That's it. I don't play uh, the removal cards because the Draco spells and traps. That's their primary function is uh, to like tribute over your apocalypse or use the field spell or uh, multi-roll to send away your heritages or your return and then that's how you kind of break boards so uh, speaking of we have two disciples and three heritage um, so the reason behind three two ratio is uh, this is the one you want to see more often because it's the most easiest to make live you can uh, use the field spell target this or any trap and then this is going to be uh, just a free upstart and then obviously they give you uh, tribute summons going second so you have more plays to play through back row and uh, clear boards uh, and then the reason why you play two instead of one is because if you manage your resources correctly and I don't play desires uh, so there's never like a risk of banishing one uh, you can always use one to put back the other and then you can essentially grind forever um, yeah so that's that and then three diagram of course one of the best cards in the deck you can chain your quick plays to this for like free pluses um, so, yeah, this card's really, really nice. Uh, and then one of terraforming, set rotation, upstart. Uh, this card's particularly insane when you draw it. Just because you give them area zero, you give yourself diagram. So then you go diagram, pop a spell, search, um, search like a heritage, for example. And then the spells effect pops the area zero on their side of the board. And then it triggers engraved to summon Ray. So in that interaction, you've gone like plus two. It's really nice. So then more spells, because you can never have enough, is two secrets and one knowledge. Um, so the reason behind two of this is because you primarily want to see this first. You want to use this to search the blue boy. Blue boy normal summon search this. This uh, use on the blue boy draw two. 
Um, and then the second one, you can just pop it with a diagram or send it with multi-roll if you happen to draw multiples. So yeah, this just like gets you out of the turn one where it can kind of get stagnant. So that's it for the spells. And then four traps. Um, this, this card actually is not very good. The only reason I play it is for the name, so I can pop two monsters potentially. Um, but I would probably play like four or five of this if I could. This card's like really, really good. Again, Sky Strikers. Um, if you set up with this plus a Heritage or Disciples, you can use this to pop the Heritage or Disciples on their turn and then pop multi-roll. So just puts them pretty far behind. So that's it for the main deck, 40 would cards plus upstart. Would there be any changes you'd make to the main deck? Um, before, let's say the, you know, you played an event before yeah. the band list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Nibiru is really the only thing. I okay. think that would just change by format. If uh, Salamangrate becomes uh, the best deck after yeah. this band list, then the Nibiru is de definitely staying the main, because that card is just such a big blowout against that deck. Sure. But yeah, th as far as the actual engine cards, I don't think there's anything I'd change. So it worked out really well. So uh, we'll do the extra first. So the extra, I would played uh, one Kagari, two Kainas. In retrospect, I would change this to, uh, <laughs> I'd actually change this to include a second Hitta, because believe it or not, the second Hitta came up a couple times today, and the second Kaina basically never came up. Um, but you definitely have to play one, just, yeah, not getting OTK'd is really nice. Uh, and then two Hayates. You don't need three because in this deck you use the Draco cards to bait out interactions going second. So the first one usually resolves. Uh, and the game just doesn't really last that long to where you would need three. And then three Shizuku. This one you don't really need three, but there's kind of a lot of free space in this extra deck. And again, Sky Striker matchup. You just want to be able to grind for as long as possible. Because I don't play Hercules base either, so. Um, once my Kagari's gone, she's gone. And then uh, one Clara and Rushka. So this card, I summon this almost every match. This is how you uh, avoid the contradiction of having a Draco monster and having a Sky Striker card. So essentially you summon the Draco, um, you know, break their board. And then in main phase two, you link summon the Draco into this. And then your main monster zone is clear to play all your Sky Striker cards. Uh, in addition, it's also a spellcaster. So if you have a dead knowledge, you can use knowledge on this. So basically knowledge is always live. Secret village can come up too. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And then, luckily I didn't play against any of that, but I think Altergeist is a relatively easy matchup for this deck. I played one Barricade Board Blocker. I summoned this card three times, but I actually only used the effect once uh, in top 32 to add back a Heritage. It was pretty nice. Um, but it's just a generic Link 2 that points down for when you just need a, a Link Climb into the, the bigger Link monsters. And its effect is pretty good. There's a lot of targets in this deck. Then I played Hitta. Like I said earlier, I wish I played two. You make this card a lot, and if it dies, it searches Ignis. So it kind of like leads into making the second one. Um, so yeah, this card's really, really good. And then Phoenix, um, it's kind of similar to Barricade Board Blocker. It's another generic Link 2 for when you just need to like link away your opponent's monsters that you stole or uh, something like that. It's also a fire for Hitta. Um, but yeah, it could really be anything. I never use the effect. And then the three big Link monsters is uh, Ningirsu, Bomber, and Boral Sword. So this card's amazing in this deck because you can send your uh, Draco spell and traps, and you essentially get to two for one by uh, sending one of their cards, sending one of your Draco spell and traps, and then you get to pop another card. So maybe in the future I'd play, uh, I'd almost consider playing two of this, because usually when you use Hitta, you summon back their uh, Phoenix, their Al Mirage, their Kagari, uh, and then you go into this. So. And then these two, uh, I don't think you really need to explain Brawl Sword, it's how you kill them. You just summon Brawl Sword, have a Draco monster, and that's game. And then Bomber. Um, it's good against combo decks to end on with uh, Shark Cannon and Hornet Drones. You essentially get like two Regekis on their turn. So yeah, that's it for the extra deck, all blue cards. Uh, and then the side deck, I sided two Crow, two Ogre, three Gnome, uh, two Impermanent. So I sided in a bunch of hand traps. Uh, this is all to counter the Lunalite Orcus deck. Uh, Would have been nice to draw some of them in top eight, but unfortunately not. Um, so this is all just to make sure that I don't uh, get hit with Imperial Order or Eradicator and they just make the, the full board. So uh, I think that Impermanence and Gnome are by far the best. Um, the only reason I played two is because uh, I only wanted to side nine cards. Like I only had nine cards I wanted to take out of my main deck. And the only one that was like so impactful that it was worth playing three of was the Gnome. The rest were just kind of average. This one's uh, pretty good. but these aren't really enough to secure the game by themselves like these can be. So yeah, that's the reason behind those. Um, and then I played three different Dimension Ground. I feel like every person who plays Sky Strikers should play this card. Um, 
So if you notice, there was no floodgates in the main deck or in the side. This is like kind of a floodgate. Uh, but I didn't want to lose to like Twin Twister, Cosmic Cyclone, MST. Uh, basically everyone has those cards between their main and side deck. And this is one of the only ways to play around it. So I would usually wait for them to like summon one or two monsters before flipping this. That way, uh, my Widow Anchors on their turn can be used to make Royal Sword and OTK them. So yeah, this card's amazing. And then, uh, going more going first cards, uh, two Shared Rides and Eagle Booster. This is what I would side against uh, Pure Striker, just because the Nibirs are, of course, not very good. So I just wanted three cards I could put in. Going first or second, these cards are really good versus the Striker Mirror match. And then this is, um, this is good in game three to kind of ensure your Hayate or Kaino resolves. So yeah, that's it. All right, do you have any, uh, any shout outs? Yeah, lots of shout outs. All so right, let's get it. Uh, shout out to Shogun's Dojo, the Arizona Facebook group. Yep. Shout out to um, Team Jobber, of course. I think we had four people in Top Cut, so represented well. Yes. Um, shout out to you, Simo, Bortle, and Jesse behind the cameras. And uh, shout out to uh, Johnny for topping two events with our deck. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it kind of is unfortunate that he got to top with it before me because I've been playing this deck for like a long time and just been like losing on the bubble or like losing last round day one. So it's like, it's, it's nice to finally get there. And you made it all the way to top A. Very yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Thanks. Cool. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Jobber here. SEMO.